Hello, fellow crafters. It's Miss Darling in the studio. And today I thought I would share with you what is a unique original idea to me. I don't know if anyone else has done anything similar to this, but it was just an idea that popped in my mind the other day, and so I decided to run with it. And so I'm going to show you first several examples of what I'm talking about and then we'll make a couple. So I'm calling this the scrolling pocket and so here's what one of them looks like and it is a pocket so one can stick ephemera inside it or even behind it if it was you know just glued on the um, perimeter and, and not across the top then you could have a pocket behind it and a pocket inside of it. But here's what the basic item looks like without any ephemera in it. And you can see this is a rolled scroll effect here. And we have an image behind it and back there as well. And it creates a pocket here. And so you could put an art card in there. You know, you could put you know, a large tag in there, and then this could either be glued to a journal page or even just paper clipped. And, uh, or you could even treat it as a flip out if you, you know, I have not decorated the back because I plan to glue these down to a page, but of course a person could decorate the back as well and then, you know, do as a flip out going that way or this way. But anyway, I love the idea of, of the scroll, and obviously that's going to add some bulk uh, if you add this into a journal, but not much more bulk than, say, if you sewed a button on top. And so there is some element of bulk there that could be lessened by, you know, just pressing it down so it's not rolled up uh, as much as I have here. So anyway, I may I always try to make companions because when I'm putting things in a journal, I like to have that repetitiveness there because it adds continuity and unity to the journal. And I just make sure that my originals kind of go together, that there are some common themes, maybe some common paper or the idea. The color palette is very important. I want them to be similar yet different. I do not want them to be an exact duplicate or a mirror image of each other. And so that's why I have the scroll going this way on this one and it's going the opposite direction on the other one. So let's take a, a look at a few other examples that I've made real quickly so you can get a good idea of what I'm talking about. Now the first ones I did just had a plain white background on the paper and, and I'll show you that as we make one. And so here is a set of two companions and if I remove the tags, the ephemera, then here's what it looks like. On that one and on this one very similar yet different and that's what that one looks like. So you don't have to put ephemera in if you don't choose or you can use smaller. Uh, I happen to have some large tags that I felt coordinated well with them so I stuck those in. So that's a set and here's another set that was made early on when my scrolling side was just plain white and uh, I like that because it gave nice definition between the front side and the back side but I changed that up as I went along and so that's how one of them looks and then the companion it looks like this with the scroll going in the opposite direction So we have that. Here's another set. And what I like as well about these is I chose to use paper 
from my stash that wasn't exactly a favorite of mine and and I probably wouldn't use it you know as a standalone for anything I wanted to make but it was a great way to use up some of that type of paper and it's amazing how when you layer other things with something that you aren't fond of how you become fond of it <laughs> And uh, uh, so I really like how these turned out, even though the original background paper here was not one of my favorites. So now I've added some numbering and some script over on this side. And so you see how these two companion up together. These were so fun to make, I cannot tell you how much fun I had making these. And I don't know yet exactly how I'll use them or in what journal, but they are neutral enough overall that I could probably use them in almost any journal I might make in the future. So here's one that's got some beautiful birds on it. And then here's the companion also with birds to be, you know, to have that continuity. And then I found, you know, some like this bookmark that has a bird on it. And I thought that just made such a wonderful looking pocket set. And so then these go over there. Okay. So those are the examples that I have to show. And back to the first ones, uh, adding some uh, uh, bulleted design to it and, uh, you know, just having fun and using up things that, you know, images and papers that I already have in my stash, uh, many of them, you know, were, were things that I wasn't fond of and, and then I became fond as I worked with them and made something that turned out really nice. So, okay, it's time now for let uh, for me to get busy showing you how I made these. Okay, so I have pre-selected a bunch of things to look at as we make another set. I have some, you know, some interesting looking papers that I have on hand. I have some decorative things and now here is the basics. Uh, put this stuff aside. So what I started with was a single sheet of eight and a half by eleven paper that was printed on one side with this design. And so Here's how, it, here's how it came out of my printer. And so what I did is I cut it in half, roughly in half lengthwise, and then I have folded that in half so that I have two pockets that I can make from the same sheet. Now, from this side, the, the, the backgrounds here don't seem to go together all that well. And you can see that one of them is a little bit taller than the other. And so um, I think maybe I think maybe I'll go with with this as the front of one of them and this as the front of, of the other one. See this one is going to scroll back this way and this one will scroll back this way. And I can see already that I do not have this stamped with, you know, covering the total amount of space I'm going to need because I had first planned on doing it the other way. Well, let's see. I don't want to go to that trouble to do some more stamping. I guess we could do it this way. You know, they're not going to be in the journal at the very same place to be compared with anyway. So that I don't have to take the time. I have 
just to point out, I have stamped the back of these at an angle. This has a script side, and then this has more of a of a um, like a typed like a typed uh, stamp set. And then back here, I have more of the same of that, and some script over here. And um, I did that deliberately with brown a brown ink pad. And um, so. Yeah, so we're, we're going to have, when we, I, I like the idea of having, you know, it's supposed to be a scroll, and scrolls were used in olden times to write books and, and send messages, so I wanted it to, you know, kind of convey a little bit more of a message being on it, rather than just plain or some other kind of design on the back. So... One's going to scroll back this way, and this one will scroll back the opposite way. And so now I just need to cover the, the back. And so I'll work on just one at a time. So I'm going to cover the back. And it's important to do this side because as you scroll that back, the you know what it's going to show on there. I don't necessarily have to cover the entire width because it won't probably show anyway. So let me get a piece here of just some paper and I'm going to use a glue stick for this part of it. And so I'm going to cut this. I don't have to come all the way down. So I'm going to just use a blade to kind of cut this. Right about like that. Okay, where was I? Alright, so I've got this cut off. And so I'm going to glue that. Put some glue on the back. How are you all today? Hope you're well and prospering. had a big storm where I am yesterday. A lot of rain. But, and it rained at night again, but it's beautiful out today. I'll have to trim that off a little bit. Alright, so that's one. And then I'm going to do something similar to the other side. So we have that one on that one. And so I'm going to just trim this off. like so. Oh, come on. 
stop grabbing grabby grabby okay and then I'm just gonna add some of this at the bottom because I don't oh, didn't quite get all of that glue on Okay, so I have backgrounds on and so they will look, look nice as companions. And so now I'm going to make my scroll and I don't want it to raise up and create too much depth. So I'm going to use this very thin paintbrush as my helper and just, you know, starting in the corner, I'm going to wrap it as tightly as I can and go down, you know, about that far and then release it. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. The bigger your your wrapping tool or paintbrush is the bigger the scroll will be and then that will uh, just automatically add maybe a little too much um, depth there if you're going to use this in a in a journal you might you know so you know make it nice and tight if you can and now I'm going to eventually glue those in place, but I'm not going to do it right now because I need to decide what I'm going to use for decoration on the front. And I made the mistake a couple of times of gluing that down rather hurriedly, and then it made it impossible to slide an image underneath if, if I uh, used something that was... Um, big enough to require that so I learned the hard way don't glue it down yet my first thoughts <clears throat> on this were to use kind of some uh, black imagery uh, on it but and I know that this is rather transparent it's semi-transparent and that image is going to show through which I think will probably make it more difficult to even appreciate the image so I'm going to cancel that idea right now um, so we'll get rid of both of these those were Tim Holt tissue uh, background imagery that I acquired and uh, now I have a bunch of you know just ephemera uh, some numbers letters um, this type of thing which will go nicely with the type of ephemera that I've already pulled out to go in into my um, uh, pockets so I'm kind of liking that I could use that on one of them but I don't want to use it on both so maybe something like this uh, could I could start out doing something like that and then go from there 
and do some layering. And I did pull out these nice images of mushrooms. And those would kind of look nice too. In fact, I think I might like that better. So what if we did something like that there and something like this here? Would that be better choice? And then, you know, layer, you know, so like I've got the red on both. Or do we want to kind of, I think I kind of like a, a little bit more of the image there so I don't have to do as much collaging in order to fill up uh, any gaps. So I think we're going to go with that and then maybe add uh, some other things like like this. That go there. Let's see. I kind of like having something that looks a little bit like a certificate or a ticket or something to liven it up. So what if we kind of stuck that in there and over here there's less space to work with. What have we got here? Free admission. That's kind of nice. Maybe just slip a little of that behind there. Hmm. I think maybe I like it better without without doing anything more to the, on this one. It's smaller, doesn't need as much. And then over here we can be a little bit more elaborate. Now, do I want to add any lace? I don't think so because this is a little bit rougher, a little bit, you know, less feminine, very vintage. And so I'm not going to do lace on this. And I like how it's coming together. And I'll probably do some more bulleting on it. And so uh, let's just proceed and see where we wind up. So now I'm going to glue this down and just have that one little corner. will be slightly under the scroll and then we'll add this number now do I need something back there would I want to have something sticking out. I don't think so. I'm just really liking the background as it is and I don't think I need to add anything more to it. Which then means I'm ready to glue my scroll in place. So I'm going to tighten it up again and bring it down and then I'm going to put a little glue back there You don't need a lot of glue, just enough to hold that in place so that it doesn't pop off. Okay, and so I'm not happy with this edge, so I'm going to 
trim that up a bit. Okay. I'm not adding anything back there, so I'm ready now to glue the bottom in place. So I'm going to run some glue up this portion right here and then down along the bottom all the way over to my fold and press them together. Then all I need is my little enamel accents. See if I can get this going. I don't know how much paint is still in there. And we'll find out. You always want to test this on something else to make sure you're getting a clean drop of paint. And I'm going to run like three little, maybe about three bullets or simulated bolts. <laughs> down there and then I'm going to run a row down here as well and I'm putting about a quarter of an inch space between them whenever you're doing this you want to make sure you don't put them too close together because if one of them should run on you then it's going to mix with an adjacent bullet then and not look very nice okay so there we have that and so then uh, adding some ephemera into this pocket we can get something like this all right I'm liking that so I'm gonna set that aside so I don't take a chance on ruining my little paint job there and now we'll come back and finish the second one so this is what we're doing we have this little ticket poking out and that's going to scroll over the top that's about right where I want that and so I'm going to kind of glue those together a little bit before I do anything else so that will wind up exactly where I want it Okay, now this is going to be pretty much centered on that amount of space, which will frame it nicely. I see I need to move up a little higher so you can see. Very sorry if I've done anything out of frame. Okay, I'm gonna just slip that in there. And then I'll drop this down here.
think I, I like it over there best. Always looking for balance when I'm done. So positioning your focal points becomes very important if you want to be really happy with the overall look when you're done. You want to try to balance the left side with the right side, visually. Now I'm going to roll this up tight again and roll it down about so. I want to cover that corner a little bit but not too much and so we'll just kind of slip in under there and lay some glue in there and then just roll it over and hold it for a few seconds so the glue sets up and hardens a little bit. Okay, and now all we got to do is put some glue down here and run it all along the bottom so our ephemera doesn't fall out of our pocket. And press that down. You see how easy these are to make? It's really, the toughest part is, is really just pulling out, you know, things that are coordinated color-wise with the overall palette that you want to use. And, you know, just giving yourself a bunch of options that uh, you can play with. And then it's just a matter of fine-tuning and, and getting the, the final result. So now all I've got to do is add my little bullets this is optional of course you could trim off your white borders at the beginning if you don't want to have this. I didn't do that and at first I liked the white borders and then I decided to you know kind of dress it up a little bit more and there we go. Now here's my little scrolled pocket and I can add some you know, that like a tag like this, and maybe something, you know, smaller to go with it, right? And there we have it. So now let's now let's compare them as as companions. Let me first remove all my debris here so you can see them better without distraction. I'm trying to be careful so I don't smear my little bullets. And there you have it, my two companions, my scrolled pockets. And I really like them. I, they're just so fun to make, I can't tell you. And you'll just have to make a few yourself to find that out. They're not difficult and just really fun how they turn out and the usages for them are, are as varied as you want them to be and you know you could just have fun and it's a great way to use up scraps that you already have that you have no plans for and you know just uh, <laughs> relieve your studio of some of the mess <laughs> anyway I know we're always, the more we make, <laughs> the more odds and ends we wind up with. So it's a never-ending battle, but if you don't take time to use up your, uh, you know, your scraps and whatnot, 
then you'll, before long, <laughs> have a completely unmanageable crafting area. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this content, and I hope you'll try it yourself. I hope I've inspired you. Thanks for watching, and that's all for this time. This is Miss Darling calling this a wrap. Bye-bye.